Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. It is worrisome to observe the recent developments in Ukraine and the ominous signs that democratic development is regressing and e being undermined by the apparently politically motivated use of the judicial system in Ukraine. Many Canadian members of Parliament, including the six members of Ukrainian heritage on this side of the House, Madam Chair, along with political leaders from leading democracies around the world, have questioned the conduct of the Timoshenko trial and subsequently the health of democ democracy, transparency, and the rule of law, and most certainly, most speaker, most certainly, Madam Chair, justice in Ukraine. To start, Timoshenko is being accused of abusing her authority as Prime Minister during the signing of gas agreements with Russia in January 2009. The prosecution claims that this caused significant damage to Ukraine and a loss of millions of dollars. For this, she has been sentenced to seven years and fined approximately $200 million. This is an apparent manipulation of justice designed to prevent her from seeking political office in three years' time. The prosecution claims that she was able to achieve lower prices in negotiations with the Russian state gas company because she was guided by private interests. It's worth noting that negotiations took place in a situation that was a gas dispute between Ukraine and Russia where shipments of gas to Ukraine and Western Europe had been halted. Secondly, the conduct of Timoshenko's trial did not reflect internationally accepted norms of due process or fairness. Even though the hearings were originally transparent and open to the public, latter stages of the trial were conducted behind closed doors. Furthermore, the court's treatment of Timoshenko's defense team is highly suspect. Despite numerous petitions for the court to uphold the Ukrainian Criminal Procedure Code for ample time for her lawyers to review case files, the judge ruled that three days was sufficient for the defense team to read and process 5,000 pages of evidence. That is 20 inches deep of paper, Madam Chair. It is very clear that any legal team would find it impossible to put together an adequate defense with such insufficient time to prepare. Adding to my skepticism over the conduct of this trial, Madam Chair, is that Yulia Timoshenko was charged by the Security Service of Ukraine with another criminal offense one day after her sentencing last October 11th. It is alleged she embezzled $405 million while, president, uh, pre, uh, while uh, president of the United Energy Systems of Ukraine in the 1990s. This leads me to believe that the Ukrainian court system is applying selective judgment and apparently allowing political interests to interfere with judicial impartiality and due process. Madam Chair, there's no doubt in my mind that Timoshenko's conviction and pending charges are aimed at silencing an effective opposition leader, a necessary requirement for a healthy democracy. That's why I am speaking out today, Madam Chair. This case is much greater than the fate of one Ukrainian leader. This, case of whether the, this is a case of whether the Ukrainian government respects basic human rights and its responsibility to provide fairness and due process under its laws. Viktor Yanukovych has made it clear that the cries of democratic nations for Yulia Tymoshenko will not lead to her liberation. He insists that the rule of law is supreme and an independent judiciary exists. Ukrainian authorities, Madam Chair, have to realize that their actions hold consequences for Ukraine's international reputation and its relationship with Canada. Canada, and especially its Ukrainian-Canadian community, are seriously concerned about democratic regression. The Ukrainian community in Etobicoke Centre, Madam Chair, has expressed their outrage to me. I have stood with them, Madam Chair, and protested at the Ukrainian consulate in Etobicoke, and I spoke out about this apparent application of judicial vindictiveness. These concerns are shared with the Canadian Prime Minister who in his letter to the Ukraine's President warned that bilateral relations, now dominated by free trade talks, could be damaged by these recent events. In his address to the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress just last week, the Prime Minister was very clear on Canada's position on Ukraine, a position I wholeheartedly support. And I quote, Madam Chair, Canada will support Ukraine whenever it moves towards freedom, democracy, and justice. Along with all of my constituents, I truly hope Ukraine does the right thing and upholds democratic freedom and the rule of law, ensuring a long-lasting and productive relationship with Canada and all democratic nations now decrying this situation. Madam Chair, I stand with my constituents of Ukrainian heritage and indeed all Canadians of Ukrainian heritage, Madam Chair, to denounce this apparently shameful course of action President Yanukovych has embarked upon. Slava Ukraina, Slavo Canada. Thank you, Madam Chair. Don, I am sharing my time with, uh, with the member from Dauphin, Swan River, Marquette.
questions and comments. Uh, the um, honorable member for uh, l'honorable député de, de Laurier Sainte Marie. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Présidente. Euh, merci beaucoup. J'aimerais remercier mon collègue pour son éloquente présentation. Maintenant, j'aimerais savoir s'il pourrait élaborer un peu plus sur, que, sur les actions que le Canada pourrait prendre diplomatiquement pour euh, tenter de résoudre la situation et faire pression sur l'Ukraine. Merci, Monsieur. Uh, the Honorable Member for Etobicoke Centre. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to thank uh, my, the Honourable Member for her question. Uh, Canada is doing everything it possibly can right now. Uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs has issued strong statements in his own communiques to the President of Ukraine, as has uh, the Prime Minister, especially last Friday, when he re received the Timoshenko Medal at the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress event, uh, telling uh, President uh, Yanukovych in a letter that he had sent them that he jeopardizes uh, relationships with Canada and uh, fr free trade negotiations are ongoing right now and our uh, relations will be in jeopardy if uh, actions and democratic regression continue. Questions and commentaires? Questions and comments? 